Joining me now is Rhode Island Democratic Congressman Gabe Amo, who's, of course, a supporter of the vice president. Uh, and, uh, Congressman, thank you for being here. Uh, vice President Harris rolling out this agenda specifically ta tailored to black men. It's about three weeks before the election. There are many states that are already voting. Uh, is this an admission that the campaign is struggling with black men compared to recent Democratic campaigns? No, I rather, I think this uh, rollout today of an opportunity agenda for black men is coming at just the right time, right? Black men have a tremendous opportunity to be the closers in this election. And what the vice president is doing is lifting black men up and their issues as we have people making this critical choice uh, on what vision to choose, because we know that Donald Trump is only worried about himself. This is an inclusive vision that the vice president is putting forward so that black men and all of America rises. I want to show you some of the numbers, Congressman. A, a New York Times a Siena poll of black voters shows that Harris is up 78 to 15 percent with black voters. Uh, our exit polls in 2020 had President Biden defeating uh, former President Trump 87 to 12. There is a bit of slippage there when you compare those numbers. Uh, is it safe to say that there's a little less enthusiasm uh, that's pronounced among black voters uh, than in 2020? And if so, why do you think that is? Well, look, this election was always going to be close. And I, I think at this point, uh, the, the vice president is honing in on the key messages and leaving no stone unturned in trying to, to reach out to core constituencies, especially black men. Look, it's time uh, for us to, to focus on things that provide economic opportunity, that really call attention to the rights that we need to protect, and, uh, of course, the long issue of lowering costs. That message needs to be clearly articulated. It's why the campaign is doing the work of going directly to black men across this country, having huddles with, with black men to talk about this vision. And, you know, the vice president has not uh, been a candidate uh, for a, a long time. But throughout that time that she has been a candidate for the president, she, she has acted with great precision in contrast to what we see from the former president who only wants to do things like move our country backwards. All right, I want to play something uh, that we heard from former President Obama say last week. Take a listen. We have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. And that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. I'm speaking to men directly. Part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. What do you make of, of what the former president had to say there? Uh, is, is that accurate? Or you think, do you think there's some concern among black men about just the idea of voting for a woman? No, I, rather, I think what you see from former President Obama is elevating black men and saying you can make a difference for someone who has shared life experiences to you, someone who is spending her career looking to empower black men. So I think President Obama very, very firmly uh, put the power, the agency in the hands of, of black men. And I think with the policy rollout today, we see the campaign meeting the moment and addressing the needs and priorities of black men across this country. I want to talk to you a little bit about some of our reporting from some of my NBC News colleagues. And they write that Vice President Kamala Harris's team has been discussing ways to clean up her responses to questions this week about how she would differentiate herself from President Joe Biden. The discussions within Harris's team have included how she could put more distance between her and Biden, the people familiar with the discussion said, as well as what that would entail in the final weeks of the 2024 race. Why do you think that this is happening now? Why do you think that she feels the need to separate herself from President Biden? And is it enough at this stage of the race? Well, look, a big part of the vice president's campaign is putting a new way forward in front of the American people. And so articulating that is part of what uh, she will do. Uh, as she has said already, she has a different life experience than the, the president. And, you know, the president has an overwhelmingly, uh, uh, you know, powerful life story, but so does the vice president. And we need to hear more of that. Her career uh, as a prosecutor, her work uh, to, uh, to combat 
big banks. She has done real things that have moved this country forward. So we'll hear mm-hmm. that. Additionally, she's going to put forward policy positions that uh, are uh, moving the ball forward in a way that uh, we, we aren't able to because of the, the end of the Biden-Harris administration and hopefully a turn to the Harris-Walls administration. So for example, we heard her policy on home care coverage from Medicare. That is a very strong policy po- point that addresses a concern of so many people across this country. And we'll hear her articulate her vision for how she'll lead and how she'll make that new way forward a possibility, uh, not just the possibility, but our reality. But is there some effort that she needs to make in terms of actually removing herself from some of the specific policies that are already in place because our polling shows that 45 percent of the respondents said that the Biden policies actually hurt their family and that they're concerned uh, about the way that those policies were enacted. So it's not necessarily about new policy proposals, but does she need to distance herself from any of the specific policies that have already been implemented during the Biden administration? Well, look, I refer to your same polling that shows her uh, winning on being the change agent in this election. People see her as a change agent. So she uh, will continue to articulate her vision for leadership and why she is uh, a a continuation of the the great things accomplished in this administration, but a path-breaking leader in her own right. And I know she has a town hall on the books for uh, later this week. She's going to do this interview now with Fox News. Uh, You know, at the beginning of the campaign, she wasn't doing many interviews. What what do you think make of this strategy as we get closer to Election Day? Is it a sign that they're worried that she's falling behind or is it an effort to reach out to as many people as possible? Well, I I think she has reached so many Americans. Just look at last week. Uh, She was on Howard Stern, uh, Call Your Daddy, Stephen Colbert, while on the other hand, we saw former President Trump in hiding again and not being transparent with his medical records, uh, certainly hiding from 60 Minutes. The contrast is is very clear. The vice president is out there. She is having massive events. She is talking to press in every form. Uh, from disaffected Republicans uh, to rallying the base. She is doing it all, and the organization is built uh, to to keep going and talk to voters in every segment of our country so that we have a successful election day. All right, Congressman Amo, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.